Stardust in the audience there, there's Ronnie Wood with the whirlwind. We've also got artist Damien Hurst, part of the O'Sullivan fan club out there. And the waiting is now over as we welcome, and we, we cue Mr Rob Walker. Thanks, Hazel. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. There have been some great moments in the 41-year history of the Daffabet Masters, and this could be another. It's a sellout, and the atmosphere here at Ali Pali is absolutely electric as we prepare to welcome two men who, between them, have won everything in the sport. Hold on to your hats. This could be huge. Please welcome one of the finest sportsmen his country has ever produced. Winner of 18 ranking event titles, twice a world champion, twice a Masters winner. Here comes the Welsh potting machine, Mark Williams! And his opponent, arguably the greatest player ever to grace the game. Five times a world champion, five times a UK champion, and five times a winner of the Masters. Here comes the Rocket, Ronnie O'Sullivan. question that these two men have given us some of the very best moments in the history of the sport but what will they give us today in this best of 11 frames opening match let's find out with Steve Davis Dennis Taylor thank you Hazel good afternoon everyone what an atmosphere as you could hear as the players were introduced thank you ladies and gentlemen first frame Ronnie O'Sullivan to break it's Ronnie who won the toss and he gets this match underway has to be said that Mark Williams got a fantastic reception also <laughs> what can the rocket produce after that layoff we know what he did when he won the World Championship and didn't play for a season, come back and defend, well, won the title again. Quite incredible that was. But that was a longer match. He had a chance to bet himself in, best of 19. This is only the best of 11, so he's got to get out of the starting blocks as quickly as possible because he's up against a tough opponent here, Steve. Yes, I think the adrenaline will be pumping for both of them. What a fantastic atmosphere to perform in your first match. Nerves could be jangling a bit. Arguably, you would think possibly Mark Williams would be a little bit unused to this big type of crowd. He hasn't been performing in this type of atmosphere as often as Ronnie recently. But if anybody can handle the pressure of something like this, Mark Williams can. Clever shot there. Nearly got it safe, apart from the ready missed. Yeah, he thought he could take this on, and uh, if he potted it, he could get on the pink. If he missed it, he might get it safe, but he hasn't. He's left it on. And you get a terrific round of applause for a pretty straightforward shot, but everybody's uh, buzzing here in the alley pally. 
Yeah, the crowd are certainly up for this. Three. It's not as nice as it could have ended up. Played that yellow very well. A bit too close to the cushion for comfort. Four. He has been playing. <laughs> Quite a bit of snooker, some shows and a few legend shows. And I've, on two occasions, been with him and he's made maximum breaks on both occasions. And that's on a club table. Well, should he have chosen to go into the pack there? He had the perfect angle. Ten. It would have split the reds all over the place. Unusually, he didn't go into the pack. Looking to perhaps Eleven. open the pack from the blue. Pink probably goes into the left corner. Well, what a shot he's played there. <laughs> How many players 13. would have even thought of playing that? It looked like he was playing into the reds. He was playing to free the pink and black. And he's a bit unlucky that the black has finished so close to the cushion, but what a, a clever shot that was. See, the 14. problem here is, mind, there might be a red at the back of that bunch that goes so he can drop the black in without forcing it. And there is. It's amazing, he, he can sort of create a chance just in the blink of an eyelid, Steve. 21. Oh, the most astonishing break builder we've ever seen in the game. And one of his great strengths. 22. Such a quick brain that allows him to play with such fluency. Uh, there's nobody plays that shot any better than Ronnie O'Sullivan. Played it perfectly. Thirty. It wasn't easy to get the right side of the blue there. He was a bit too close for comfort to get the top spin on. But shouldn't have any trouble going in and out of bulk. <coughs> Well, those bulk colours always get in the way. I expected them to miss the yellow, but uh, it can happen. 35. It just, uh, the white seemed to be bouncing around there and just took a slightly different angle. He's picked out a shot to nothing, though. Not bad, and a decent safety shot. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 35. Mark Williams would have been fearing the worst there, but a reprieve. I think he might be able to get through to the red, to the left corner. I'm not sure. Well, that's pretty tight, that. Yeah, he feels as if he can see enough of the red to pot it. He may have to commit totally. I don't think there's a way of playing this safe at the same time. One. I'll tell you what, that was a terrific long pot, so he's in fine form. When you knock this type of shot in, Eight. you know you're queuing well. And Rune on the grapevine is in practice. Ronnie O'Sullivan. Ronnie O'Sullivan's been flying. Made an astonishing amount of century breaks in the Championship League. 
recently. A tournament played behind closed doors, but still competitive. 16. It looks to be striking 17. the ball beautifully. A little bit underpaced, but not happy. The green's missable, but strokes it in. Twenty. Yeah, one of the big secrets one. of the game of snooker is being able to take your practice game onto the match table, and it's not every player that can do that, but this is certainly one of them. He plays the game as if he was in his club practicing. Having said that, he's uh, just ran slightly out of position. 28. Bit unlucky with the yeah. cannon there. He only needs one more red to leave Mark needing a snooker. So he's going to have to wait for another chance. Bit well, unfortunate with the cannon there. <laughs> yeah, you could play this another ten times and you'd finish perfectly on a red. A Mark Williams special. Well, it's a bit of a problem. He can't get through to the blue, I don't think, and he needs a colour, otherwise he'd need a snooker. That's a bit unfortunate after that terrific pot. If he had been able to see the blue, he had a chance here. He might be committed to swerving this very fractional swerve. I don't think the roll-up's any good to him behind the green. Oh, Brown. It's a judgment shot. He hasn't had much table time. Very tough to get this right. No, I didn't Mark take Williams. the swerve. What? It was very, very tough to judge that, but he had to pot the blue, otherwise he was gonna need a snooker, and he does need a snooker at the moment. Well, even that type of shot, he was close to the cushion and he made it look ridiculously easy. So he's sending out an early message to Mark Williams. Eight. Because all Mark Nine. has done is pot a fantastic red and been a bit unlucky not to drop on the blue, so he hasn't had a chance, really. I think Mark would have expected Roddy to be playing sharp coming into this. He would have prepared properly, Ronnie. But obviously, Mark would have hoped that he wasn't firing 17. straight away. Doesn't matter Ronnie about O'Sullivan. the Brown. 17. And the friend. Mark Williams stays in his seat. It's been a fabulous start from the Rocket. Ronnie O'Sullivan takes that opening frame quite comfortably. And he leads Mark Williams by one frame to nil. Do it inside, even though he doesn't admit to it too often. Well, he must be loving it right now. He's <laughs> one nil in front. Yeah, picking up on that point, I'd say that Ronnie O'Sullivan is a more dangerous snooker player here than even the World Championship. I know he's won that five times, but one table set up right from the off. Might be happy with the safety there. Well, he's got an easy red, but where's the colour going to come from? The natural angle when he pots this is to go over towards the reds and pink, so the black's not available into the right corner. He could do with finding a gap to possibly get through for the blue, but uh, keep an eye on the cue ball here. 
hard, you know, harder he hits this, Dennis, the more it's going to stay in the pack. So he's got to hit it relatively soft. It still went into the pack. Well, that was like a trap he couldn't get out of. Yeah, it was very difficult out. He'd probably nominate the green, I would think. Any colour, uh, he's got to hit it because the miss will be called. But you see, there's a red that's on to the right corner. If he was to hit one of the bog colours full ball, he'd leave that red for the right corner. But there's no colour available, so it wouldn't be all that bad. W wouldn't be so bad leaving Ronnie a sort of shot from the left hand side of the table at that red, but he wouldn't necessarily want to leave him down in the green pocket area, otherwise, perhaps Ronnie could get back down the table from potting it. Yeah, the reason I mentioned green is the easiest angle to escape from the snooker, but he knows he could leave that red. That's why he's taking longer on the shot here. He might have to have a couple of goes at this if he's going to choose more than one cushion. Try and catch the back side of the blue somehow. But yellow ball. Uh, three mm. three cushions for the yellow. It's a pretty good effort. I'll Great tell you shot. what, what Great a shot, shot. he's here. Wow. <laughs> what an escape that was. And hitting the yellow yeah. on the edge meant he covered that with the blue, the one to the right. He needs to contain Ronnie at the moment. <laughs> and this would be a, a nice ball to knock in for Mark Williams. Confidence builder if he should get it in. Well, yeah, the kiss on the red there has left himself the wrong side of the blue. If he hadn't have cannoned that, he'd have been on the blue for the opposite middle pocket, and he would have had the correct angle. So, having to pirate it round the table, <coughs> and really, he might be snookered when the blue goes back onto its spot. Yeah, a bit unlucky there. He was just a little bit too close Six. to the blue to get the power on. I think perhaps if you asked him again, he might just have rolled through and left himself a longer red. Bit short of pace. Can Mark it creep Williams. behind the Six. green? No. That may be second best if it's awkward queuing for Ronnie. There's no easy safety shot because he's bridging over the green if he comes off the reds here. He's got to be very accurate with this. Uh, he can get back down the table, but that's awkward. Yeah, <coughs> just caught it too thin. You can do that when you're striking over a ball. Well, Mark Williams got a bit lucky there. Forced an error from Ronnie. That looks tight. He's got to read into the right corner. But I'm not sure he can reach, even though he is left-handed. So that's a tough shot at the best of times to get position on a colour. So whilst Ronnie has made a mistake there, he also may have got away with it. Yeah, it's so easy to get a little bit of unwanted side on. That's why he hit it too thin. Just couldn't get himself out of there. With no what? shot, that was about the best he could do. <coughs> Got 
got to take the pot on here, really. This day and age, you don't get many chances. Doesn't have to play a pot, but the yellow looks inviting. One, Mark Williams. Uh, there was a lot of pressure on Mark with that pot there. You know, it's, uh, as we said earlier, three years since he's been at the Masters, and uh, he normally would knock that type of shot in, but there was a bit of pressure. A bit unlucky to leave what? it as easy. Uh, it looked like he might have got away with it, so um, the chance falls to Ronnie. He played it quite a brave way, slow. It would have been easier to have stunned it in, punched it in, with a bit of tension in the arm. That's usually an easier way, but committed fully and looks to have paid the price albeit the black is still awkwardly placed six having said that if the red above the black as we look at the table pots it would be seven opening up the black into the right corner. So if he can get ideally on that red to the left of the black that we've just seen. Plenty of chances to get blues before he gets to that situation. Yeah, well, he could quite easily decide to just stay on the blue. As long as you keep getting the correct side of the blue, you, he's got, what, three, six comfortable reds. In fact, seven, the one next to the black, so okay also. Eighteen. Nineteen. He won't get on that red next to the black until he can guarantee the right position with the cue ball, so. Left himself a bit further away from this than he would have wanted. 24. <coughs> 25. And he's lost it a bit here, but. One good red after this blue. Could be back in prime position, the right side of the blue. Still makes it look so easy, though. 30. 31. Might have to play for the red. That's two from the black now. He's got the blue. The yellow's off at spot, so nothing in the way to prevent the cue ball from coming back up for those reds. And that looks to be, uh, well, he could have done with it a little bit further up the table. 36. And he's got to play a pretty good shot now here. 37. Yeah, it was the angle he got on the previous red when he potted the blue didn't quite come far enough up the table, so all he could do was try and develop the black, which he didn't really want to be doing. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 37. Excellent safety shot. Ronnie's break falling down. Effectively by not getting the right side of the blue enough times. But Mark Williams is left with an awful safety shot here. Whichever one he chooses has danger. He's got it very thin. Ooh, excellent shot. <laughs> Ronnie may have to move the black into play, which is in Mark Williams' favour, really.
nice flick on the yellow. Well, superb containing pot, couldn't guarantee position. Mark Williams, one. Well, this is going to be difficult for Ronnie O'Sullivan to get safe from. Might have to trust to a bit of luck here. Mm, he's not wide, he's not shallow enough on this. And Foul, the miss. Uh, Mark Williams, four. Got away with that one, really. That's a very difficult cut. Yeah. yeah, he's having to play with so much swerve on the <coughs> shot here to just land on that red that's near the cushion. And even then, he's not guaranteed to leave it safe. But if he just nestled onto it, it wouldn't be um, all that bad. But it's such a tough swerve. Yeah. Colin Humphrey's there, just making sure the white's in the right spot. Yeah, Mark's quite happy. Mark, can he judge it this time? But it's so tough. He's missed it the other side, has he? Foul, miss. Mark Williams, full. And Mark stares in his seat. That's the correct side to miss it on. The other side, he could have stuck the red up, so the adjustment was, was made correctly only 20 points behind now Mark Williams so for all of the good shots that Ronnie's played he's still in with a good chance in this frame this looks to be perfect See, with that shot, it's so difficult to judge the pace because the swerve takes all the, the pace out of it. It's so easy to get that wrong. But oh. this might... We've seen a lot of the balls go in along the cushion yeah. here. This would be interesting to see what happens this red. This is dangerous, but they do hug the top cushion. We've seen that. If Mark Williams has been watching the television, he'll know full well that that was the right shot to play. Oh. No, I know, Dennis, it's easy to sit here um, in the commentary box, but along the top cushion, the pockets look very big. Eight. Nine. As the cloth wears in, the will get a little bit tighter. Yeah, but I think it's pulling to the top cushion that makes a big difference. Gives the players a bit more confidence. 16. Perhaps just that green in an awkward position for an ideal clearance. I'll 17. tell you what, Steve, this could be a very early turning point. We're only in the second frame, but this could play a big part in this match if Mark Williams could uh, get himself back all square. And as you said, the green is the key ball, but it's not that badly placed. 22. Twenty-three. Now, what sort of angle has he got on this yellow? Mm, I'm not sure. He doesn't want to be dead straight. And he's almost straight, but he can force a slight angle. Mm. See, if he can't get on the green, he can screw back behind the green and then play a snooker in behind the pink if he can't leave an easy pot. And that's maybe what he might decide to do, although 30. he can take it into the middle pocket, the fact that he's finished where he has. Big shot now. Not just potting the green, but trying to get the right pace and direction on the cue ball. Of course, he can roll up behind the pink. I think he's got the angle for that. Uh, 
it lets Ronnie Su Bertie O'Sullivan back Bartholins. to the table, but... <laughs> Ronnie will probably play this with pace. Well, that's all you need. <clears throat> Three. Absolutely incredible. What a fluke that was. And that will hurt. Mark Williams is such Seven. a laid back character. But listen, <laughs> well, no player deserves that. That's amazing. He's been punished severely by not getting <coughs> correctly on the yellow. How cruel is that? Because it wasn't badly on the yellow. Oh, this looks good. If he misses the pink. 12. Well, it's a little bit more difficult now. Will he play this left-handed? That's the question. Because, well, he only needs the pink. He will play it left-handed. Very oh, unlucky for the from there. there. That was an unbelievable fluke that Ronnie O'Sullivan had. But you've got to take the luck when it's there. And the rocket leads two frames to nil. He prefers that, Dennis, to using the rest. Mm. It looks weird. He only needs a red, and uh, well, anything from the green upwards. <laughs> There's the underarm shot we show you. He's so good at that, and this time it didn't come off, but there was a little bit of laughter there. I'm not sure quite what was said. He's got a horrible shot here. He doesn't really want to disturb the two reds on the side cushion. Could be forgiven for trying to play something a bit more adventurous. A two cushion drop onto the three reds. Seems to be nice at the moment. He'd be happy with that. And gradually, Ronnie's bringing all those reds into play. There is a path back down the table there between the pink and black if he catches the red correctly here. I don't know if he can take the pot on at the same time, but make sure you get a good cue ball. Well, he did take the pot on, but uh, mm, I think he might have been better just making sure and finding the gap back down the table. He's opened the reds up. Well, this is not a certainty. Great shot. Well. He made it look like a certainty, the way he struck that. He's been striking the balls very positively, Ronnie. Usually strokes them in. It may have been the shots he's been left in the match so far, but seems like he's Four. hitting the ball with great authority. Mark would have been pleased to see that pink go to the side cushion. Five. Ten. Just a hampered slightly for the red to the right there. So he's choosing the one near the black. Eleven. Amazing. It looked like the frame was all over not so long ago and the balls were safe. All of a sudden, Ronnie O'Sullivan's got a bit of a chance here. Eighteen. That last red was just 19. fantastic. If he misses it, He's lost the frame. He just cued it beautifully. Well. 
six. From the side cushion. That was a tough shot. And Ronnie O'Sullivan's making this look. 27. Like a walk in the park so far. Still a couple of difficult shots to go. <laughs> 34. These are precious shots. He's given himself a chance to win this frame. Mark Williams' only hope is the pink. 35. Well, I mean, when he came to the table, uh, you would have thought that he's got no chance of clearing up. Oh. And well, after all that, can you believe what happened? Seven, Mark Williams. That is quite amazing. He was flying along, and how often would you see, well, any snooker player do that just shows what can happen on that green base do you know he played a screw back on the black a couple of shots before and then he played the red over the top of the other red and i wonder if he chalked the cue and he best perhaps just didn't get enough chalk back on the tip at the screw back part After a big screw back, you've got to be careful you haven't taken Fred all the chalk off the tip. Fred Mark Williams. Well, Ronnie stays in his seat. It looks like he had a chance to pinch the third frame, and that uncharacteristic miscue uh, meant that Mark Williams took the third frame, and he's now just one behind, 2 1 to Ronnie O'Sullivan. Yeah, just bridging over those reds just caused him possibly to get a little tiny bit of side <coughs> that he didn't intend on that. That's the first miss, really, from Ronnie, but uh, hmm, just wondering if that Miss Q is still thinking about that. I mean, this is not a gimme, just overcut it slightly. Still looking at the tip there, but I don't think he took anything. Sometimes you can take a little piece out of the tip, but it's fine. When well, we know from past experience that Ronnie's a bit of a, a worrier when it comes to the tip of the queue. I know what you're thinking, Steve, but those days are long gone. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're thinking back to the World Championship many, many years ago. I think he had about 12 different tips on, and uh, he was known to to bite the tip off and uh, get a new one put on. Les Dodd used to come down from Southport and put Ronnie's tip on for him. Les, a former professional, still playing. Well, you would like to see this yellow go in. Took the pace out of the cue ball. Yeah, I'll just show it to you again. You could see the yellow leave the bed of the table. Ronnie anxiously looking over Mark's shoulder there. Wasn't a massive one, but Mark Williams' reaction immediately told us it was a kick. Yeah, he's still on the red that's near the pink. Without the kick, it would have been a straightforward shot. No underarm shot this time. Got the extension out. Nicely played. Four. Now, can he see the black? That's the question. If he can, he'll take this fourth frame. And he can't. He's unlucky. <laughs> Good throw. Can he get through to see the pink? I don't think so. If he can't, he may be tempted to put the black safe. He hasn't decided yet. There is a way of playing the black 
sending the white ball off four cushions and getting be down behind the green if, if that pink goes. Oh, superb. Ten. This is a very difficult red. Should he choose to take it on with slightly awkward queuing? Mark Williams, ten. Nearly over the line, but not quite. One. Well, similar scenario to the previous frame. On the end with a possible chance. Now, has he well and truly forgotten about that miscue in the previous frame? It's the sort of thing you've got to put to the back of your mind. Forget about it. Six. Easier said than done. Seven. No better player in the game than Ronnie O'Sullivan for knocking balls off of cushions during a break and deciding when's the right time to do it. Tried to flick this red out, knowing full well if he did 14. miss it, he'd be on a colour. Has he got a chance to do it again? Could he play the blue off of the top cushion, knock the red off the side and be guaranteed on the one to the right of the pink? Chose not to play it like that. Thought he could have. Well, the angle 19. was there. Perhaps he thought it was going to collide with the red if he hit it too hard. And this has turned 20. out nicely. He's got the perfect angle on the black to bring that red next to the pink into play. Oh, he snookered himself on that. But he's right back in this match. One good safety shot here when he brings the difficult red into play. If he can get in behind the yellow and close to the cushion. Doesn't want to hit the brown. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 27. It's safe, but it's not as he would have liked. Target now is the brown for the players with their safety shots. If you know if you get anywhere near the brown, every chance of getting the snooker behind the yellow or that brown, but uh, Mark can get through to this. May can in the black if he pots it. It doesn't matter, it's all about the pot here. Well, an excellent pot, Dennis, and uh, Mark's got control of the table. You would assume putting a colour safe, unless he fancies the black in the middle. It's a frame winner, but it's not guaranteed. He got a kick, and it's gone wide. Mark Williams, one. Well, I expected him to knock that in. He was queuing so well, and the kick has spoiled it. Let's have a look at this again. Just jumped slightly and the black went to the left, Joe. Very unfortunate there. Yeah. You don't see him react very often, uh, Mark, but he knew if that black goes in, he's all square at two each. He still might be, but he could have done without that heavy contact. Ronnie O'Sullivan's not in bad position now. He's got the chance to play the first telling safety shot. And no balls are safe. Trying to use the blue or the yellow as a snookering ball. It looks to have poked its nose out. Perhaps it hasn't. 
No. And now, Mark Williams needs a nice slice of luck. Oh. Couldn't have asked for better. Well, I'll tell you what, Mike Williams in his <laughs> pre-interview said he might have six people on his side in this arena. He's getting a terrific reception from this crowd here. Well, a way out there, and has he got away with it? Mark Williams. <laughs> should be able to play a, an easy snooker behind the black, putting cue ball the far side of the black I don't think it's anything else other than a very risky double oh he's under hit it oh that's an awful shot at this level actually I think he's even stuck it up oh it's terrible <laughs> I don't know if that's stuck up he's having to play it left-handed but he's so good but it's it's not a straightforward shot can he see enough of it I don't think he can That's a massive mistake by Mark Williams not to have guaranteed what was a very easy snooker. <laughs> if he does go 3-1 behind at the interval, it was down to that shot. And he's had a little bit of banter with the crowd, and the crowd, I think, have taken to the Welshman here. And this is a pretty good result. I think if it pulls up or hits the brown. Well, Mark Williams has got a chance to perhaps get that brown a bit closer to the cushion, which makes the clearance harder. Oh, it went. Well, but didn't think that potted. Well, nowadays we keep talking about Neil Robertson being the greatest potter the game's ever seen. Mark Williams is right up there Eight. with the Australian. He's definitely one of the best potters the game's ever seen, is this Welshman. Well, it doesn't matter about missing that. Ronnie said, Mark Williams, eight, and That's afraid. enough, and he goes off to the mid-session interval. And I'll tell you what, Mark Williams will certainly be the happier of the two players. He goes off, and we're all square at two frames all. Lovely to hear. Thank you. Frame five, Ronnie Co O'Sullivan to break. Colin, Colin Humphreys trying to get this crowd to settle down. It's Ronnie who gets the first frame after the mid-session interval underway. Got a little double kiss there, which tied the black up. The reds finished up next to the black there. Doesn't usually happen when Ronnie breaks off. We see it happen so many times, but it's a pretty good break-off shot, though. It's not the first time that he's got that red to stay on the side cushion. Not even giving Mark Williams a tempter. Played those well today. Or even better. <laughs> I think he can get to the edge of this red. Well, he had to swerve it, and he's put a red over the pocket, but uh, the black's tied up, the pink's tied up. How does Mark Williams get to the blue from here? Let's have a look. Has he got a slight angle? And that's how you get to the blue. Well, absolutely fabulous shot and an angle on the blue if he wishes to bring the pink and reds into play. Might even free the black. Oh. 
Well, How many times do we see that the player forgets about the pot? <coughs> but at least he didn't leave anything. But that first pot that he knocked in, the action he got on that was terrific. slice of luck early on in this frame. Good shot and he's on oh. the pink. course of this match seems to have turned and it seemed to have Seven. changed after that miscue from Ronnie O'Sullivan eight yeah, funny enough I was talking to Mark Williams at the mid session it was about this shot here and it was as if Ronnie hadn't made his mind up because Mark said why didn't he just stun the black and go up it looked as if he was trying to screw back so maybe he hadn't made his mind up and that little bit of indecision caused him to just dip the cue slightly, and that's why he jumped over the top of it. 14. Well, it's a chance. 15. But it's not a clear-cut chance yet, but Mark Williams looks to be in pretty fine fettle in the potting department, that's for sure. Is he going to be forced to try and open some reds up here? <coughs> oh, he's underdone that. He played for the red at the back of the bunch and he's uh, left himself snookered on that. So now he's going to have to try and get a snooker behind the green and blue. 21. Leave the white tight in the cushion. That's the one he was trying to get on. I mean, it wasn't great getting on that red anyway because it was going to be hard to guarantee. Perhaps he could have considered going into the pack of reds, but it wasn't guaranteed also to get on a red anyway. It's quite critical. He had to try and get the right angle on that under hit it. Hit that a little bit too thin. <coughs> One. Difficult to control the cue ball from that type of shot. He was hoping to possibly be on the pink, but he knew if he got it thinner, he always had the ball colours. Over screwed a little way. Eleven. But now in playing this, you should be able to develop reds, should he so wish. Twelve. There's a couple of poke their nose out. <clears throat> Brown was a, a two cushion choice to get on that loose red. And actually 
if he had have played the brown, he would have been guaranteed straighter on this red. 14. Williams. I think he should have played the brown there, Dennis. I, yeah. I know if he, under, if he doesn't underscore the yellow, he's OK, but... Yeah, he left that white in a terrible spot for him. He, he, he almost pulled that off and brought the black into play, but he didn't get on the, well, the red, as you said, as he intended. Ronnie immediately taking the opportunity of opening all the balls up. There's going to be lots of twists and turns in this match, but that really has opened things up. But back to Mark Williams, he had a great chance there. Oh, I was just thinking, right. having lost the two opening frames and, and winning the last two, if he had have gone on and won three in a row, he would have been a handful. Still an awful lot for Ronnie to do here. 16. 17. Two reds, and, and they're not really safe, because the one, the right side of the table is OK for Ronnie being a right-hander. Well, the one along the top cushion certainly not safe. 24. 25. Chance now, should he wish to get on the red on the side cushion. He's taken that opportunity early. Thirty one. Thirty-two. Could also take the opportunity to get on the red on the top cushion. Thirty-nine. That's the second last red. Forty. Forty-seven. No. Forty-seven. Uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan. I know this top cushion, the the ball's clinging to it, but if you don't hit it correctly, they won't go in. And uh, yeah, that was nowhere near, was it? You sent that away from the pocket. Well. And now there is a chance. For Mark Williams to win three frames in a row and get himself in front. Well, chose the red into the middle pocket. Eight. Nicely on it this time. Trundle through with a cue ball. Nine. This would hurt Ronnie O'Sullivan. Couldn't ask for the balls any better. Yeah, and he doesn't have to worry about getting from blue to pink. The green, the brown and the blue would be enough. Twenty. Twenty-four. Twenty-nine. Twenty-eight. 
Well, he's not bothered about the block. Block. It's a frame that could have gone either way, but in the end, it's the Welshman who takes it. And that's three in a row. And Mark Williams now leads three frames to two. Oh, he's got into that too much. 20. That spoiled it. He'll be a bit disgusted with himself the way he played that shot. Really didn't get enough backspin to kill the cue ball there. Blue ball. Touching ball on the blue helps. Can put the yellow safe, perhaps. No, rolled off. Mark Williams, 20. Ball looked like it rolled off a fraction. His reaction said that anyway. Yeah, that's where you have to nominate the ball because he's touching the blue. He had to nominate whether he was playing blue or yellow. So the referee will always say in that sort of instance, uh, name the colour, please. It would have been in, in his advantage to have put the yellow safe there. It would have meant that Ronnie O'Sullivan would have needed to get the yellow back out again. Very quickly down on that mark to play this shot. Uh, can he get it in behind the green here? There is a chance he can do that. Has he got enough pace on it? It looks pretty good to me. Relatively easy to contain the situation from here. It's going to be hard for a while to either play to force an opening. another roll up at the moment it'll take a little bit of sorting out because of the way those reds are situated the 27 point advantage that mark williams got is stronger than it would be if the reds were all in the open it's not to say somewhere down the line they won't be <coughs> He has a shot on here, but he's reluctant to play it, Mark. He could come off the top red of the three on the cushion and try and go twice across behind the green, but he would be opening all the reds up, so that is not an option. It's too risky. Yeah, in this situation, Mark Williams is saying to Ronnie O'Sullivan, you're going to have to play the riskier safety shots. You're going to have to try and open them up and take a, take a chance that they don't move into potable positions, I'm quite happy to contain the situation. Oh, what a flick that was. Full ball on the yellow, and Ronnie would have had a chance at the red into the right corner, but he snookered on that. And this is tough. Where's the black? Foul. Unbelievable. <coughs> Mark Williams, seven. Played it well, but uh, you can't anticipate something like that happening. Hasn't changed things massively. Cleverly worked through the gap. Well, this red over the left corner has to be played, really. You won't like it much, but you'll like it a lot more now. Great shot. Well, Well, if 
needs to pull up and it's just about okay. Just hit the yellow a little bit thinner Straight. than he anticipated. Four. He's looking in great shape here is the Welshman, it has to be said. Lost the two opening frames. And every chance now of making it four in a row and the whole match has swung round ever since Ronnie miscued on Six. that black off the spot. Seven. Yeah, we've shown it a couple of times. It was just as if he was a little bit indecided and got down, and you don't see that very often. <laughs> now you see 46 ahead, just this red, and it will oh. be four in a row. It was always going to be a tough match for Ronnie O'Sullivan, having had so many months off, but he started so well that all 20. of a sudden it's Mark Williams that's doing all the damage. 21. Yeah, and amazingly, I suppose from Ronnie O'Sullivan's perspective, looking at the draw coming into this match, Whilst Mark Williams may not be the force he was at the turn of the century. 28. He's a big occasion player himself. Perhaps it was a tough, tougher draw for Ronnie O'Sullivan than some others in the tournament. 29. Doesn't matter, he's overcut that. Mark Williams, 29 on the and floor. the Welshman marches on. Ronnie stays in his seat. And Mark Williams has taken another frame. And he now leads four frames to two. And the reality of the situation for O'Sullivan, he's two frames to four behind. Yes, and the reality is he's got to really win this frame. And that's not the best way to go about it. Catching the blue from the break-off, so... That focus is not quite back yet. He had to screw back there. The pink and black were tied up. I'll tell you what, they're certainly tied up now. Look where the black's finished up. Had to get back for a bulk colour. And every indication that we could have another scrappy frame with the black going into the pack. And as the boys in the studio said, Mark Williams doesn't mind that at all. He can mix it whatever way you want. And he butchered that one. And he got the pink and black out. <laughs> Certainly the black. What an awful outcome from Mark Williams' perspective. One. from something that looked like it was a reasonable chance with not too much danger. And now Ronnie O'Sullivan needs to flick the switch, move through the gears. Didn't want to be colliding with that red. Eight. And if any player can go from zero to hero, it's Ronnie O'Sullivan. Nine. And it usually doesn't take him very long to do it. So this is fascinating to see how this frame's going to pan out. He's got another, what, let's see, maybe three, four reds available to him. 16. 17. So let's see if he's got that focus back again and... And he started playing the way he started the match. 24. A little bit under hit, perhaps. 25. Nicely recovered. 
32. Beautifully controlled. Didn't give it everything in the backspin department. Kept that cue ball in the middle of the table. That's the art of smashing into the pack. 33. He was on all blacks there. And when he opened the reds up, there was every chance he could have stayed on the blacks, but he had to go up for a bulk colour because of where he finished up. It's a massive frame. He has to win this frame, Ronnie. Thirty-seven. Thirty-eight. And all of a sudden, normal service looks to have been resumed, striking the ball beautifully. One of his greatest strengths, the ability to reel off frames very quickly. <laughs> How well did he strike that left-handed? <laughs> well, he's had to play it with top spin. Yeah, top spin and left hand side with the opposite hand. That was special. 41. <laughs> Made it look so easy. No reason now why he can't go on to secure the frame. But we've seen what happened on a black earlier on when he jumped over. But this shot here, loads of top spin. 48. Loads of left hand side. Played to perfection. We don't usually think of Ronnie O'Sullivan in terms of having to fight his way back into a match because he makes it look so easy. But I think he's digging deep here and showing great character. 49. And the range of shots is just wonderful. But 48. He hasn't come to this event just for a bit of match practice. When Ronnie O'Sullivan turns 56. up for an event like this, he's come to win. So you'd have put the preparation in. 57. What a recovery that was, because he played a pretty poor shot to leave himself straight on the red and then to knock it in at that pace 64. and screw back off the cushion. That's quite something. Sixty-five. Seventy-two. Seventy-three. <laughs> Frame well and truly safe now. He's already made 802 century breaks. 18. That is quite astonishing. 81. And it hasn't taken him very long to knock these in. 88. So there's 89. no rust there, I can tell you, the way he's taken these. Possible 139 on, although I would assume that he might play it as a 137. Not sure what the highest break 96. is. 96. Yeah, I think it's still 137. Mark Allen made that. And there's 10,000 pounds for the high break prize. I necessarily think Roddy might not be aware of that, and I don't think he'd even think that 137 would end up winning the highest break. It's irrelevant now. 104. Well, that may be the end of break, but what a fabulous century Robert break. Sullivan, back against the, the wall. wall. Four two behind. How did he respond? He got one chance and he made a century break, but he still trails by one frame. It's four three to Mark Williams.
Oh, he sent the red over the corner pocket. Not good. Got a good cue ball, but didn't think he'd double the red over the corner, but he did. Oh, a bit unlucky. He tried Whoa. an exhibition type shot there with a lot of top spin. And they're so lively, these played just top spin and hoping to stay on the black, and it just kept on creeping towards. This is thin. Surely he can't cut that in. Boy, this is some shot he's taken on here, I can tell you. Look at the angle there. He's got it. What a shot. What a cutback that was. Eight. And he's a bit unfortunate by the looks of things, but dear me. They don't come any thinner than that. Now you can't see enough of that, Mike. You'd have to get a little bit of side on it. But how unfortunate was that? Once he pulled off that unbelievable cutback, he was uh, very unfortunate not to drop nicely on a red. <clears throat> Nowhere to play safe. Where is there? Big shot. Mark Williams, eight. Has he picked out an area to make it difficult for Ronnie O'Sullivan? I think he has. So it's not clear cut. May have looked reckless from Mark Williams, but that's one of his greatest strengths, being able to work out a aggressive shot to nothings. Obviously, this red goes, but it's not as clear cut a chance. How well did he strike that, though? Perfect, and he's got an angle to stun down between the brown and yellow. And an early chance, and after that century break in the previous frame. Six. What's in store for us here? Seven. The blacks in the open, the pinks out of commission, but that won't concern Ronnie at this stage. Red, blue, and then up for the Nine. reds that are close to the black. Ten. He's got other choices of reds, but uh, if he can get to the ones near the black, it would help. He's going to leave that for the time being. In fact, this one here will help to clear the pink. Fifteen. You can still get through to the black. Sixteen. Removing that has opened the pink up somewhat also. The previous frame lasted just over seven minutes. How long is this one going to last? Thirty-one. Thirty-two. If he can get to that sixty-eight points on the bar there, the frame will be safe. Thirty-nine. Forty. I think that kicked slightly. It's took a little bit of pace out of the cue ball there. I finished dead straight on the blue because of that contact. 
Just see the red jumping, but still OK. 45. 46. And I mentioned I was having a chat with Mark Williams at the mid-session interval, and he was saying, how well is Ronnie hitting the ball? You know, not often you hear someone talk about their opponent, but he said, doesn't he strike the ball? Fantastic. Yeah. I think the main burners have been ignited here. It's always risky when you're having to play cannons, but he had to do that time and it hasn't worked out for him. 60. He's 52 in front, he needed a few more pots to secure the frame with one visit. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 60. A quick fire, 60 break, but he's not over the line yet. Well, that's unfortunate. One. He may be forced into taking a very difficult green now without the jaw of the middle pocket he would have been a lot nicer on the color but because he's behind by so many he's got to take this on great shot i say a great shot he's come up a bit short but he put everything into the pot there full But that black he cut in, I mean, that's one of the best shots I've seen for a long time. Mark Williams, four. I think Ronnie O'Sullivan can get to this. Mark Williams took a risk trying to cut that red in. He could have played a nailed on safety shot. <laughs> Kept the frame on the boil, but Six. it's all over now. Seven. Fifteen. So it's amazing. Uh, two frames behind in a matter of uh, some fourteen minutes. He's all square. Twenty-three. Got a bit of a kick on that, but he wasn't really concentrating on the pink. It was a magnificent effort of 60, but it has to be said, Mark Williams was very unfortunate when he cut that black in, but Ronnie O'Sullivan's back. It's four frames all. The break. Buzz around the crowd again after those two frames from Ronnie O'Sullivan. <laughs> they have been very fair, the crowd. Mark Williams has had a terrific reception from them also with some of the snooker that he's produced. Acknowledged by a tap on the table there from Ronnie for that great shot. 
Oh, double kiss. Oh, he's got away with it. Who's a lucky boy? Once he got that double kiss, I think Ronnie thought he would have left quite a few on. It's a touching ball. Little smile from Mark. We keep telling you how laid back he is, this Welshman. And have a look at this. <laughs> He's having a selfie. I mean, that gentleman shouldn't be allowed there to have that, but that shows you what Mark Williams is like. Imagine coming up and asking you for a selfie, Steve, if it had been around <laughs> in your day. <laughs> Brick phone was invented then, was it? What has he spotted here? Is this plant on, or can he make it into a plant? Possibly. Oh, no, no he, he made it not into a plant. <laughs> it was a plant until he overcooked it. No, oh, he had to hit it fuller, didn't he? Because it's just like a squeeze effect when you hit the first ball. That's a great opening red. Eight. Never easy. He didn't get on no. the red as he intended. And difficult to judge when you're screwing back, hitting no. other reds. That was a great attempt to keep on the black. He overcooked it. Ronnie O'Sullivan, nine. Got some action on the cue ball there. Once again, Mark Williams forced to play a thin escape. Shouldn't be too difficult, not that thin. Oh, he's missed it completely. He's missed a couple oh, up and down the table, hasn't he? Ronnie O'Sullivan. A lot of four. shots he's played well, but. Jan, can you have the screen up, please? Yeah, Colin Humphrey's just asking. Jan Verhaas to get the screen up just to <coughs> show him exactly where the cue ball was. Left a bit. There's Jan Verhaas uh, who's on the scoring today. Just a fraction the other way, Jan's saying. Okay. Right. Can he just catch the edge of the red this time? Not great, but could end up great <laughs> if it just gets behind that green. <laughs> oh boy. Sullivan seems to have cut off paths back to the bulk area for Mark Williams. So, what can Mark work out to the top cushion? Yeah, I tend to say the top cushion, which it is on the snooker table, but for people watching at home, it's the bottom cushion on the screen. It's a it's a bit tough to call that. I always say behind the black spot, the cushion behind the black spot. I'm waiting to hear from you, Steve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> so what should we call it? The top cushion, the bottom cushion, or the cushion behind the black? What okay, the black cushion and the bulk cushion. Let's, let's make a make a committed decision that is the bulk cushion you can see enough of this <laughs> that's 
not an easy starter for Ronnie, okay. especially if he's straight on this. If he's got a slight angle, he can get onto the black. But he's just off straight. Not easy, this. One. Now one good pot here and a cannon, and he's right in business again. So here we go. Ronnie's in first again. And he made breaks of 60 and 104 Eight. in the two previous frames. Nine. It was a superb opening red. He started off this match looking in fine 16. form. And as things are currently, it looks like he's going to finish off the match in fine form. 17. Never know if there's another twist in the tail, though. little spotting process for Colin Humphreys. 23. One of our top referees now. 24. Another cannon needed. Thirty one. Could have worked out better. Closer than he would have liked to this red. Made it look very 32. easy. <laughs> easy to jab at those ones. 38. Looks like Ronnie O'Sullivan's going to 38. get over the line here. Interesting to see how 39. Mark Williams will perform. On the back foot. <coughs> well, I suppose you can only perform if you get a chance. He's not getting any chances in these frames. 44. 45. Okay, Ronnie didn't clinch the last frame with a break of 60, but it paved the way for it. But Marks had precious little to go at. He just had that cutback the boys were talking about. Fantastic cutback and was unlucky 51. not to drop on a red but this 52 is not far from being over this frame just one more good shot he hasn't played that too well he's got to be careful with the reds he's leaning over there bit of a distraction and if he cannons this red he's okay if he drops in behind it he's not okay 55 just can get to the potting angle Sixty-one. Sixty-two. Sixty-nine. <laughs> Moving that difficult red, so... Although the frame's safe... He's Seventy. Set himself a target of a possible 1,000 century breaks in his career. He's 197 short of that. 77. What a feat that would be, but you wouldn't put anything past this player. He is a delight to watch. He really is. Eighty five. Eighty six. Great to see him back and playing like this, Mr. UK and the champion of champions, where he 
could have defended both of those titles, but chose not to. But he's back at his brilliant best here. Ninety. Ninety-two. We've had five centuries so far in this year's Masters. It's a certain sixth. Eight hundred and four century breaks for Ronnie O'Sullivan. And a little exhibition shot to finish it off with. 110. And this crowd at Alexander Palace enjoying every minute of this. 117 on the The rocket really is on fire as both players leave the arena. Mark Williams has got something to think about. He can't get to the table. Ronnie O'Sullivan leads 5-4. And Mark's still having a little bit of fun with the crowd, Thank you. so he's still ten. Mark the Williams relaxed break. Mark Williams. And he looks pretty comfortable there as well in his seat. That's the beautiful Waterford Crystal Trophy that they're playing for. Who's going to be picking that little beauty up next Sunday evening? That is the big question. Well, he's got a chance. It was a similar type shot to the one that Mark missed the other side of the table in the previous frame. Now, what can the Welshman produce here? And John what? Parrott wants to see a deciding frame. I think everyone would love to see that, but uh, I don't think Ronnie O'Sullivan would like a last frame. He wouldn't mind it, but he'd rather get it over with in this frame. Eight. Nine. Those two reds close to the black have got to be sorted out. It could easily go wrong, any cannons on those. And it just goes that outside red, which is very handy. 16. And a nice little settler to the 17. start of this frame for Mark Williams. He hasn't really had much table time, so the way this is turned out just get his arm going some stage obviously he's got to go into the pack but he'll have a nice lead 25 well this is his fourth black coming up as you can see there I think he can run through for the black again Looking at that angle, just about. 33. Getting a little bit more difficult now. So red goes through the gap near the pink. Chose to go into them. Not ideal queuing. Well, he left to play 40. for the blue this time, so he'll quickly forget about all blacks. It's handy, he could get his cue quite low there through a gap. 41. OK. He's a little bit underpaced, but he should be able to control this blue for the loose red. Screwing in and out of bulk. Oh, a bit short as well, but just about got there. 46. He's an amazing player, Mike Williams, he really is. Um, his temperament is superb, as we mentioned a few times. 
He's the sort of player he 47. could come out of an arena, he could have won a match 6-0 or lost the match 6-0 and his expression would still be the same. He'd still look so relaxed and laid back. Is that a plant? That's, that's massive if it is. Oh, he's got the Norfolk. Oh, he's not even on the plant. Oh, no. Well, that's so unfortunate because the white has come back no distance at all. And I don't think he can get to that plant that you mentioned, uh, Steve. Um, not, not certain. Yeah, because he could squeeze it away from the pocket. But so anyway. He's playing the three ball plant. There's a gap between those two reds, but it's risky to play it now. Can't really get a ball safe here. Of can you just see enough of that? Mm. Might have possibly. Mark Williams, 50. But I don't think the plant's on. You'd, you'd have to play at a three-ball plant. Yeah. You can't play it if you can see it. I don't think it, it would go. He would squeeze it away from the pocket. Well, perhaps he was playing that red all along. It wasn't just a plant, but that felt like he was playing for a plant. Well, Mark Williams is now going to be forced, I think, to go up and down the table off the top cushion and try and thin snick one of those three reds in a line. <laughs> Terrific judgment there from Mark. Uh, he's pushed one over the pocket and he hasn't covered it. Great chance for Mark Williams now. One good positional shot here and we could have a deciding frame. Oh, he played it. He played the shot with loads of drag and bottom. He was walking. He thought he got it. Well, if Ronnie O'Sullivan gets on a ball colour easily there, I think he's favourite in the frame to win the match, but now what? Green's hard. There's a red begging to be potted over the pocket, though. He's got to strike this well. Oh, how well did he strike that? <laughs> he made that look so easy with the ball Four. so close together. They're so difficult. Well, there's not a ball safe Five. on the table. And that missed red from Mike Williams could be so costly. It looked almost a certain to pot this. Played it with lots of bottom, thought he'd potted it. And well. then all of a sudden, shock horror. It didn't drop. There's usually no better player in the game than the counter-attacking part of Ronnie O'Sullivan's armoury. I don't know what one of the spectators was doing, but the referee just wagging his finger at him there. So. We've got nearly 2,000 people in here. They've been fantastic. They've had an absolutely superb match to watch. A little bit of work to be done with those three reds. <coughs> and it's gone deathly quiet now at the Ali Pali.
29. Can't do anything about it. You've got to sit and watch and hope that something goes wrong for your opponent. But the way he's played in the three previous frames, breaks of 104, 60, 117. 35. 36. 44. He's underscrewed that. Thank you. Just left himself the wrong side of the blue, so having to take the pink. 45. Now, what sort of a cannon has he got here? It's not perfect. There's a little bit of in 50. between the middle or the corner. So, one more good shot needed here. It's not there. Ronnie O'Sullivan. It's not 50. over just yet. It should have been, but he went slightly out of position there. Well, well he knocked it in, but he liked it a bit further away from the cushion than this. What a pressure part this will be. One good screw back now. Or has he got more of an angle, perhaps? Eight. Yeah, one good screw back. Ten. Well, it looked like it was all over. What twists and turns we've had in this frame. Thirteen. Mark missed that sitter of a red. Ronnie looked like he was going to clear up and clinch the match. But we could have a decider. John Parrott gets his wish. 17. <coughs> 22. Absolutely fantastic from Mike Williams. As the black goes in, the scores are all square. Who's going to go through to the next round? That's the big question. We've got a deciding frame. It's five frames all. Oh, he's done that for the second time. The break-off shot catching the blue, but at least it's not going to be costly because the black's not available. There's a possible pot. We'll show you. Just hitting it too thin. It's a big shot to take on. Especially if he's got to use the extension there to pot this red and screw back for a bulk colour. Maybe. It's a bit of a stretch. Played it, played it with safety. Thank you. Well, that red's dead straight, I think, so Ronnie just turning it down, but it's going to be available at any one time. So he's got to get a good cue ball. Well, he's left that red that you mentioned, and um, there is a path round the back of the black. Um, Mark Williams will take it on, that's for sure. But tensions are rising, and he's got away with it. The red's going to run safe. Welcome to the twilight zone. <laughs> oh, there's nothing mm. like a twitching last <laughs> frame. Well, this, this is potable, but uh, it's going to be some sort of shot to get on like, any colour at all. It's not worth playing, really. This is time for a, a clear mind. 
Surely this doesn't cut in. Surely it's a safety shot. Wait, is he playing the cut? It's off the cushion. Oh. Well, I didn't like that much. I thought the safety shot was <coughs> nailed on, but it's going to be hard to make a break with the blue off the spot at the moment. Well, what sort of power can he generate here? Oh, he threw everything into it. Well, <laughs> he, what a great shot. What a great shot that was. Well, two incredible screw backs there from Mark Williams, and he's, he's got the pink into play. Three. What? <coughs> Superb cue power, the type of stuff we usually see Judd Trump or Neil Robertson play, Four. but he got the pink into play, and this is a chance. And still, he looks as cool as a cucumber out there, but inside there's got to be a little bit of tension and a few butterflies Ten. fluttering around. As I mentioned earlier, the last time they met these players, 2014 quarterfinal of the International Championship, Mark 165. Mm. He played for the blue there, but he's actually now giving himself a chance, should he want to, to open the pack up. I don't think he'll... You know, he's betwixt and between thinking about whether to play to open the pack. Went in softly, could be... That, oh, he didn't go in hard enough. He should have committed more. Does it go in the middle, though? Oh, if it does, he can get on the pink. He might be OK. Oh. Perhaps he knew that. Sixteen. You can see the, see the look in his face. He's fired up, completely fired up. Got to be careful with this one. Which he was, but he just let the white ball run away. It's cuttable, this red, but he's no control on the cue ball. <coughs> 22. And he doesn't want to just cannon into the red that's near the cushion there. That's what he's looking at if he just hits that the wrong way he won't finish on anything it's hard to avoid that it's a natural cannon and he managed to get round the back of it but he doesn't want to be straight on the blue 23 he needs a bit of angle and I think he's got it to get up to the reds no Tried to cannon the pink and reds there. I said Mike was as cool as a cucumber. I know there's one person in the arena. His wife Joe's here with him, and she won't be as cool as a cucumber. A delightful lady, and uh, the three boys are at home. They'll be watching this. Mark Williams, 28. It's a superbly controlled safety shot, although Ronnie has got a path back down the table between blue and brown. Well, we did manage to find Joe that's there in the audience there. She'd be so nervous. She's a lovely lady. Ronnie will be happy to, I assume, will be to get this red away from the black. Screw to the top cushion. 
So he got the snooker. He's very quickly there to see. So Mark Williams could be argued he asked for that. Perhaps he saw he had no other chance of safety, so. That was a clever shot because there's no easy escape just to come off and land in the red. You'd leave one on. He's just going to play and swerve this a little bit just to catch the edge of the red. Now, where does he put this? Well, he must have been in severe trouble to have to risk that type of shot. Great strike. Whoa. He's on the green, is he? What a superb strike that was. Didn't look much, but off the cushion. Oh, he's not sure he can get to it. Then it's just the roll up. Small reprieve for Mark Williams because Mark can probably Ronnie O'Sullivan, one. Find a way into the pack to keep things contained. It's not straightforward to get into that pack, though, because there's a couple of reds he could leave on. He's coming off a couple of cushions rather than directly into them. And that is that hard enough? Yep, plenty of pace, but he could still push it on. <laughs> he might have. That wasn't a straightforward escape for Mark Williams there. How close was that? I thought it was in there, and then all of a sudden it just catches that right jaw. If he'd have been further out to the left of the pocket, it would have gulped it in, but the near jaw is always the one you don't want to hit, especially on these match tables. Perhaps a club table, they slide in. So, advantage Mark Williams, but not much. I like that shot a lot. Well, it was quite clever from Ronnie O'Sullivan. He's 27 behind. He didn't want to be using this back end uh, behind the black as a safety zone and wants to get the game back to normality and he picked out a very good shot there he really did mark williams can obviously see the left hand side of the pack but what he's frightened of doing is opening up the reds he really does need to get the cue ball bang on the ball cushion if he's going to play back down the table. He's having a quick look now at the top of the table to see where it's safe. Now you see there was all sorts of shots available to him. That was such a clever shot that he picked out there, Ronnie. It really was. I'm not sure if Mark Williams is considering playing a very slow half ball or thin snick to keep it onto the top cushion. He's studying up and perhaps he's disregarded that. It's a weird plant to be even considering. I think he's just got to play a, a half ball safety and, and hope he doesn't open the reds up. I can't see any other shot. The cue ball is going to come back down to roughly behind the yellow. And he's just got to hope the balls don't go into a potable position. But He's thinking it's like a risk. He's, he's summing up a risk. Well, Not the three ball plant, the weird plant. Well, the That's weird madness. plant would have to be to knock the red that's near the cushion onto the pink to make the plant. He just can't see an easy safety oh, shot, but surely, surely not. Surely not. <laughs> no, 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 he's turned it down. 
<laughs> that's what Joe thinks of the plant. That was definitely the wrong choice. He thought long and hard, and <clears throat> boy, what a shot he took on there. Well, one. That was always pushing to the top cushion. Well, surely the safety shot would have been a better option. Well, he knew if he pulled that it's tough plant off, he could have won the match. Now can Ronnie O'Sullivan... No, turn that phone off, please. ...hold himself together as someone's phone goes off. It's been terrific all afternoon, and someone has forgot to switch the phone off. Somebody can turn that phone it? off, please. Yeah, I was just going to say if Ronnie O'Sullivan can just keep himself together here. Twelve. It seems a strange thing to say 13. with a player like Ronnie O'Sullivan and all that he's won in the game, but even the greatest player in the game suffers from a little bit of pressure at times. He might well need that last red on the side cushion. Nineteen. He will Twenty. <laughs> well, everyone was looking forward to this match. They were looking forward to Ronnie O'Sullivan coming back after that eight-month layoff. But I didn't think we were going to get 28. a fabulous match like this. It really has been very special. And you see little things like that cannon. Well, he's still just about okay, but that's it's a bit of a stretch. <laughs> he made it look easy. It's fascinating to see how he goes about moving that difficult red that Steve mentioned. 43. Well, he's got to he get an angle on the second last red and flick it into play and be guaranteed on a book <laughs> colour. It's it's as simple as it could could be really. Oh. Under the circumstances, he's still got to play the shot right, but perhaps a little bit wider than he would have wanted. But if he could at all flick this red into play, he will do. Now he's got to do it from the green. Fifty-one. Needs to pull up. He doesn't want to be straight on the green, otherwise he can't get to that red. A little bit of angle. And what a shot he's played there. 54. He was almost 55. straight on the green, and he forced it over to knock the red out. That was a fabulous shot. So Mark Williams thought long and hard about that plant that he took on. <laughs> and <laughs> what he said to the referee, the yellow's got to come back up again. But what a match we've had here. Mark Williams has been superb. 59. There you see 32 ahead. We'll play the winner of Mark Selby and Ricky Walden. Their player this evening. Doesn't matter about the Brown. Ronnie Mark Sullivan, looks at the 62. scoreboard. He's deciding whether to go and shake hands. He's having a think. He's coming over this. No, he's not finished quite yet, but uh, the rocket is in the next round. Well, that's one of the snookers.
Well, LeBron's heading over the corner pocket. He needs four snookers at the moment. It's been three years since Mike's been here in the Masters. He doesn't want to leave just yet. And now we will get the handshake. Yeah, he turns to Ronnie O'Sullivan and congratulates the Rockets. It's been a fabulous match. These two players have put on a fantastic show here this afternoon in the Alexandra Palace. And in the end, Ronnie O'Sullivan, while he is back, and he takes the match six frames to five. Well done to both players. <laughs> wow, now, what, eight months out of the heat of competition in the big events and you come back to a final frame to say that. Uh, are you happy to be back and through that one, relieved, enjoy it? Yeah, yeah, it was all right, you know. <laughs> 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 a bit poor, wasn't it, you know. Oh, I'm not both sure didn't play good, but it was all right. It wasn't poor from our perspective, Ron, because mm. it was a thoroughly entertaining afternoon. Just, just tell us through the process of, of that match. You were 2-0 in front, and then suddenly Mark hits you with four in a row, and you, your back's against the wall for a bit there. Yeah, I mean, I flew to green to go 2-0, so, you know, he could have won that one. But, you know, um, I don't know, just I think when I was 4-2 down, I thought I had nothing to lose. So I started to loosen up a little bit, and a few started to go in, and obviously the pressure was back on Mark again. So, um, but, we, you know, we both missed a lot of balls out there today. So... Bit lucky to get through really. Well, he forced the final frame decider. It was all very twitchy in the end. When, when you're mm. sitting in there and you know that the pressure's on, did you enjoy being in that atmosphere again? I didn't really feel nervous, to be honest with you. Um, you know, it's, uh, this is a bit of a nightmare of a tournament because it's so, like, because I live around the corner, you know, <laughs> everyone's sort of like here and it's just, you know, I played in Crondon last week. There was no hassle. You just turned up, got your queue Nobody, out, wanted, a few nobody wanted a ticket for that. No one wants a ticket. You just, <laughs> just sit down, chill out, and you come in. It's just like mayhem. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, it's just a game of snooker. And uh, it's, just, it's just a circus, isn't it, really? Yeah. It's a bit like Sheffield, really. Mm. Must be good, though, to get through a match like that, blow the cobwebs away. You haven't been out there for a while. I mean, you've got to be looking forward to the rest of it. Uh, to be honest with you, you know, um, I'd done my back in a couple of months ago and up until then I was playing alright because I was playing in practice quite a bit doing a few exhibitions and my form was great you know and I still felt like you know I was queuing as well as I ever done since I've done my back I've not been out to get on the shot pop I'm, I'm queuing around corners mate it's sort of like <laughs> this is this that miscue there I'll tell you like, what you queue around corners very well <laughs> that, that miscue I could I had no finish on my, on my shot you know and it's just um, you know but I just I just managed to wangle that one today in all seriousness this this herniated disc that you've been talking about is it causing you a real problem well, I'm not in pain I just since then I haven't really been able to get on the shot properly and I don't, I'm not sure whether there's something there that I'm out of balance and John and Ken will tell you that um, you know some you know if you're just slightly off you know um, you know one shot goes wrong the second shot and you you know you're chasing the cue ball and I'm not very good at that I need to be in total control of the cue ball I can't play like um, you know like some of these players can can keep rescuing breaks yeah, yeah, and yeah. putting them off the cushions but I can't you know I like to be close in and if I'm not I'm like <laughs> I'm pulling my hair out. Did inside. you think you were going to get a chance in that last frame? I mean yeah. that plant he went for. Yeah, yeah I always thought I was going to get a chance yeah, yeah. you know because like I said I didn't really feel that nervous when you you're up for it and you're really flying and you think you know you, you know you think you've got prospects of going far in a tournament you think oh please don't go out but the way I've, played, I've got to get out of jail free card yeah, yeah. take yourself back a month Ronnie when you were deciding that you were going to come back and just yeah. just take us through the thought process about why you're taking the time out and why the time was right to come back I only missed two tournaments and and as it happens I wouldn't have been able to play in them two tournaments anyway because of my back so actually I'm I'm, I've come back to the only, the, the only tournament I probably could have played in anyway. You know, a lot of people say, oh, you've had time out, he's retired. I missed two tournaments, you know. Anyone misses two games in a football match or a golf tournament, no, nothing gets said. Yeah, but yeah. because I missed a couple of tournaments, all of a sudden I'm retiring. But did you miss it? Did you miss those two tournaments? Obviously, no, as you say, not really not at all. Really, no, I didn't. <laughs> Even no. though you were defending those big those yeah, tournaments. Yeah, no, listen, no, you know, I, didn't, I didn't really miss it, you know. And if I carry on playing that, like that, I won't be missing it at all, you know. So um, <laughs> Unless I play well and start flowing a bit, there's, there's no joy in it for me. So um, I've, had a, I've had a lean 18 months, really. I haven't really done much since I won the UK, you know, a couple of quarters here and there. But that's nothing, you know, it's nothing to, to be happy about, I suppose. So how close to your best do you reckon you are, then? Miles away, miles away. But listen, I'm just pleased to have won a match got in and if you if you're if you start winning matches picking up momentum then you've got a, a chance for it to click but you know it's uh, always nice to get a really close game though to start it off isn't it because you've played a lot of games you come through a really tough match six five yeah. you know the next game 
Um, yeah, I mean, listen, I always think nowadays, unless you're playing really well, you ain't going to win tournaments, unless, unless you're Selby. I mean, he can win playing bad because he can make it really hard for you and can grind it out. But I'm not that type of player, you know, I'm not going to make it hard for someone. If I'm scoring and I've got my potting boots on, then, you know, I'm going to have a chance. But if, if I ain't, then, you know, um, I'll just get picked off. You know, I should have lost that match today, really. I mean, if Mark would have had a bit more clinicalness about him, he would have probably got through and he'd probably be really disappointed to have lost that match. But I got lucky. You're back. Mm. And lucky or not, <laughs> it was a fantastic performance. Thank well you. done. You came through a final frame decide. It's lovely to see you back, Ronnie. Cheers. Thanks yeah, very yeah. much for popping up. Awesome. And I'm sure that uh, Mark Selby and Ricky Walden are very interested to watch Ronnie's progress today because either of them will be playing this man in the quarter final.